Hi, I'm Ralph Friedrichs. Today is July 28th, 2014. Welcome. Today I want to discuss a few things, uh, but first I want to go over my contact information. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. My email address is ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at yahoo.com. My website is www.clearviews.info, that's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. You can reach me on the telephone at 844-393-9355 or 631-599-0218. I just want to ask everyone that is looking at this right now to please put down your drinks, put down the drugs, and just... Bear with me, give me about 15 to 18 minutes to show you why drug addiction and alcohol addiction is not good. It's not good at all for anyone concerned. I just want to touch base also real quick before we go into my segment uh, to say hello to my friend up north. Uh, it's been now about four days since my last video. I know you're going strong. And for that, thumbs up. Congratulations. I am so proud of you. Continue doing what you're doing. Just don't overwork yourself because overworking yourself becomes stressful and with stress becomes some sort of uh, a temptation of relieving yourself uh, and we certainly don't want to relieve ourselves with alcohol or drugs. Uh, for my friend down in Florida, I uh, haven't heard from you in a couple days. I hope you're well. I hope your sobriety is going full steam ahead and nice and strong and uh, you made it through Friday and Saturday uh, sober uh, as you had uh, stated in your previous emails and text messages to me that was your weak point so I hope all is well. Today I want to discuss uh, 10 signs that you might be addicted or you are an alcoholic. This is really more that you're addicted to alcohol. Uh, there are 10 signs. Now you might notice that I'll be looking down uh, during this uh, video is because I do have a uh, cheat sheet here uh, to kind of uh, guide me through this. Um, Number one is temporary loss of blackouts. Now, I don't need to read any of these 10 other than the titles of all 10. As far as the symptoms and all those uh, items are concerned, I can really speak from experience. Temporary loss of memory or blackouts are very familiar to me. Uh, I went through them for many years up until last June 22nd, 2013. There were times I'd uh, totally forget what was said to me the prior day or even an hour before uh, somebody asked me, do you remember what I said? And I would say no, because my memory would just totally blank out on me. And as far as the blackouts are concerned, blackouts usually happen more in the morning. When you wake up, you just have no idea what happened last night. What, I mean, did, where'd you go? How'd you get home? Whatever those are considered memory losses and blackouts. So that is a certain sign of alcoholism. If you're experiencing any of those, you have to go back, step back a little bit and, and say to yourself, do I really have a problem? Now keep in mind, any one of these 10 that I'm telling you is a sure sign of alcoholism. Number two, drinking to cheer up. You know what? When I was sober, I was never happy. I barely smiled. But it's funny because the minute I would take that alcohol and, and, and I would consume that alcohol, it would get me giddy. It would give me, uh, it'd give me a reason to smile a lot more. And that's because the alcohol was influencing me, literally. And uh, uh, it wasn't the real me. Uh, I will tell you this. Since June 22nd, 2013, with no alcohol in me, I find myself a lot happier than with the alcohol because number two says that drinking will cheer you up, but it's a temporary cheering. Since June 22nd, 2013, I've been full-time cheerful. Of course, not everybody's cheerful 24-7, but there is no uh, alcohol or drugs that's getting me to be happy or getting me to smile. It's just me. It's called sobriety. And sobriety does work. Number three, you've tried to quit drinking, but you just can't. As I've stated many times in previous videos, I have tried 
over and over to quit drinking to no avail. I would uh, drink myself to, to a point of no return, wake up the next morning, say, I'll never, ever drink again. But I would then continue slow drinking. That's because I didn't hit rock bottom. And I've addressed this issue many a times in previous videos about hitting rock bottom. Rock bottom is when there is no place to go further, no place further down. It's only to move up. And that's when you have to utilize my saying, never, never give up. Because if you believe it, you can achieve it. So when you hit rock bottom, that's the sure sign that you are ready for sobriety. All other aspects of trying to achieve sobriety, where you just quit for a day or two, but go back to it, you have not literally hit rock bottom. So that was number three. Number four, you drink to be normal or to fit in. Uh, this applies more to the younger folks, to, to uh, peer pressure, to social gatherings. Uh, it does also apply to people that are weak it, going through sobriety. In other words, you're going to a bar uh, with friends and your intentions are good. You're saying, okay, I'm going to just have seven, seven up. Uh, you know, with maybe a cherry in it. Uh, nobody will know that I don't have alcohol in there, but that temptation, because people around you are all starting to feel buzzed and they're starting to feel drunk, and you're just saying to yourself, I want to feel like them. I want to be like them. I want to fit in because you just feel that you're just too straight and narrow or you're too sober and you're not laughing at their jokes because as everyone knows, when we drink or smoke pot or whatever, we get giddy and we say stupid things and, and no matter what is said and how stupid it is, if you're high or, uh, or drunk, you laugh at it. But when you're going through sobriety, not everything is funny because you're thinking with a clear mind. So that is another sign. Number five, and, and this is a big one, uh, flushed skin, broken little vessels on your face in particular. That is a sure sign of alcoholism. If, if, if you're, you have that flushed feeling uh, or visual aspects of your face being red spots or those broken little vessels, that's a sure sign of alcoholism. You need to step back and you need to say, okay, if this doesn't wake me up, what will? What will? So that is number five. Number six, and this was a big one with me, and no matter how much I didn't listen to my wife, Casey, because she pointed it out to me, she said, your hands are shaking. And of course, I would make every excuse possible to avoid the, the subject of alcoholism. It's because of my drinking. My hands were shaking, literally shaking. I would write something, and I'd be shaking like this. That is a sure sign. If you have trembling hands, you need to seek treatment immediately. And those trembling hands usually are in the morning after a night of drinking. Because now your blood level is now sort of getting rid of all that alcohol that's in there. And, and it's disappearing and you're starting to shake. So that's a sure sign. Number seven. <laughs> Number seven. When you're around your family and they bring up the alcohol that you're consuming and you, can, uh, you become argumentative or combative with them, to try, to try to justify your drinking, that's a sure sign of alcoholism. You shouldn't even have to get to the point where people have to point it out to you, to help you. Those are the people that love you and they want to help you. That's a sure sign. You're arguing with your family and your friends for no reason other than the fact that they're pointing out to you that you're drinking too much. You have issues. You're smoking too much. You're snorting too much uh, coke. They're just pointing all these things out to you. So you need to step back and you need to A, control and get rid of your alcoholism and your drug addiction. That's A. And B is try to make amends now with your family because you've disappointed them by constantly arguing for days, weeks, years, in my case, years. Nobody was right. I was right. I am not an alcoholic until I hit rock bottom. And once that rock bottom was hit, I started seeing what everyone around me was telling me. They were right. But see, you don't want to admit to that because you, you personally feel that you need to have that alcohol and you need to have the drugs and all that, but you really don't. I can promise you, you don't. Number eight. Number eight is lying about your alcohol intake. Big one for me. 
I think I've said this many a times in previous uh, videos, but I would make any excuse to leave the house. Honey, don't we need milk or bread so I can go out and, you know, get the milk and bread, of course, but make that side trip to the liquor shop. And I would go behind stores, near the dumpsters, and drink my little vodka shots because I didn't want nobody to know. But guess what? People do know when you're drinking. They might not physically see you consuming the alcohol or doing the drugs, but they see the after effects. They really do. And they will point it out. And that's where number seven is so uh, crucial because you're going to start arguing. You're going to be combative. So you can't do that. So people... If you're sneaking your drinks, they call it a closet drinker. If you're sneaking the drinks, if you cannot drink in a social gathering, a drink or two, and not feel guilty and not have to uh, uh, have another drink after one or two, then you have a problem. And it's a bigger problem if you have to hide that drinking. Number nine. Number nine is uh, you feel anxious. You can't sleep. You feel nauseous. Those hangovers in the morning, those are sure signs of alcoholism and or drug addiction. Um, the sleeping part is just because your whole system on the inside is still loaded with alcohol, loaded with those drugs, so you find it very hard to sleep and that nauseousness is in the morning because now it's leaving your body and you're starting to feel nauseous and they call it the dry heaves and that's usually when people like us say I will quit drinking I'll never have a drink again but if you didn't hit rock bottom that is just a temporary band-aid for today in your own mind and maybe around your family saying I'm gonna quit and that's when you might go into the hiding the drinks because they might think or you might think that they think that you quit but believe me I tell you from experience people that are around you 24 7 in your life your loved ones will know if you have any alcohol or do any drugs you might think you're concealing it in every which way but it's it's not it's not they will see it I promise you that number 10 important one drinking in the morning there were times that I just felt that I needed to have a drink to kickstart my day whether it being four in the morning six in the morning I was a great working alcoholic I could work and nobody would know because those people weren't around me all the time they were only with me for eight hours a day so I was very good at concealing my alcoholism I'd wait maybe have a shot or two in the morning and then I couldn't wait to get out of work so I can go and run and get some more and it's it's a shame because you're really stealing from your employer by doing that because you're looking at your clock because you know that you need your fix at five o'clock so you're looking at that clock and you, you might not finish your work or you might rush your work and, and that's not fair to your employer as an employee. So those are the 10 top reasons or top signs that you are an alcoholic or a drug addict. They're simple signs, so simple and every single one of those I have had. So I promise you, these are not just words, I promise you, if they exist in your life, whether it being all 10 or just one, you have an addiction problem, whether it being again, uh, to alcohol and or drugs. And that's when you need to stay, st uh, step back and say, I want to quit today, Ralph. And it's simple to say the words, but you need to really want to do it. There are a couple people that have contacted me that have not other than the fact that they contacted me, not followed through, and it doesn't make them bad people. It doesn't because I've done it. You probably have done it yourself. But what it makes me is that I'm, I'm sad for those people because I want to reach out to everyone and I want to help. I really want to help every person out there. And uh, like I've said in so many previous videos, I cannot reach out to you because you know where to find me on www.clearviews.info or on my Facebook, clearviews.info. Or if you call me or text me at 631-599-0218. But I don't have your phone number. I don't have your website. I don't have your email address. So you need to reach out and contact me. I'm here for you. Because I've said this so many times in all my videos, every single one, and I'm up to 21 videos now. 
by helping you, I help me. Now, if that seems a little confusing, I'll explain it to you really quickly. When I help you, it refreshes the fact in my mind that I am an alcoholic and I need help. And by helping you, I'm really helping me daily. So the more people that I can help, the more it educates me. Now, as far as my website is concerned, on there, you'll find tons of videos, tons of articles. And all these articles and vi videos are either written or videotaped by professionals, doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists. Not by me. By all means, I am the bridge between the professionals and your addiction. I am the bridge. And that bridge is for you to walk across from this side, which is your addiction, to this side, which is the professionals. And go walk across and get that information, grab it, and go back. And that's exactly how I did it. I'm going to go briefly, really quickly, and explain a few things that uh, uh, need to be done to, to attempt sobriety. And I say attempt because I know it's an attempt in the beginning, because nothing's guaranteed. But the more you attempt it, the better chance you have of succeeding. I had to attempt six, seven times. Number one, Ralph, I have a problem. When you admit that and you truly, sincerely recognize one of those 10 things that I just went over with you, you recognize one of them. You don't need to have all 10, just even one. You're an alcoholic. You're addicted to drugs. Once you have said, I have a problem, then there are many a methods to, to uh, seek help. Number one is the way I do it. Now, not everybody wants to do it that way. I will supply you all the information possible, anything that, that you need to, to work with this sobriety issue at hand and, and, and to walk you through it. Number two is AA. AA does work. Millions of people have utilized it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. For me, it did not work. For me, it was a gathering of people just sharing war stories. And that is great if that's what you're looking for. People get a sponsor and that is great if that's what you're looking for. I, by reaching out to you, am a sponsor in a non-AA atmosphere. I am a sponsor to you as a friend, as a fellow addicted whether it being drugs or alcohol, person that wants to reach out and help you. So AA does work if that's what you need. And if you're really bad off and you don't have the willpower to do it on your own, you can reach out to a, a rehab center or a treatment center. Now, on page 7 on www.clearviews.info, click on page 7, click on the state because there are all the states in the United States are on page 7. and. Once you click on the state, whether it be Maryland or Pennsylvania or wherever, you'll find treatment and rehab centers located right nearby you, hopefully nearby you. They will concentrate on you 24-7. They will work with you every day and push you. My methods, I can only give you the tools, but it's for you to run with it. And the same goes with AA. But a rehab center and treatment center will work with you all day. So that's another way of going about it. I say this all the time, I'm going to say it again, if you're watching, yes you, if you're watching and you're not seeing me clearly or hearing me clearly or you can't even speak clearly yourself and you've come to a point in your life where it's really bad and right now you're having, whether it being chest issues or your uh, speech issues or breathing issues, please call 911. You need to do that. You need immediate help right now. When you're finished, getting the treatment that you need to, to, to go further in sobriety, please look me up. I do a video or two weekly and I want to see you. I want to talk to you. You can reach out to me and all those different contact information, uh, uh, little tidbits that I gave you. But I'm going to go over it real quick one more time. Ralph.Friedrichs at Yahoo.com. That's R-A-L-F dot F-R-I-E-D-R-I-C-H-S at Yahoo.com. www dot c l e a r v i e w s dot i n f o that's clearviews dot info that's my web page then you have six three one five nine nine zero two one eight you can text me you can speak to me on that 
You can also call 844-393-9355. I'm there for you to speak to. I uh, will listen to the messages and then I will contact you within 24 hours. That I will promise you. I do listen to my messages there. And I'm the only person that retrieves those messages. So you don't have to be embarrassed by leaving whatever message you want. No matter how you feel, leave it because the, one of the first things about conquering sobriety besides saying you have a problem is to be honest with yourself and you can certainly be honest with me about anything because I've been there I've done everything and I do know what you're going through I know what you're going through because I have got the same things happen to me in my life so we have now done all those things and and those are the channels to reach for now I just want to also let you know that my web page in no which way do I recommend anything do I give you any medical advice do I uh, do anything other than the fact that I'm supplying you the tools to seek help through my website uh, uh, to, to whatever channels you need to go through whether it being the uh, rehab centers whether it being the AA or even me so remember nothing is impossible because if you believe it, you can achieve it. If you really truly believe that you can conquer your alcoholism, your drug addiction, you can achieve that. Because to remember, a sober today does make for a better tomorrow. I hope I see everyone soon again, and I really truly hope I hear from you. And if you have even one out of those ten things that I discussed in the beginning of this video, that makes you addicted to alcohol and or drugs. You don't need to have 10, you don't need to have 5, all you need is 1. Remember that, 1 out of those 10. Step back and think about it. Because your loved ones truly, truly need to have you around in their lives. And you're the only person that's going to hurt them and hurt yourself by not seeking help if you're addicted to drugs and alcohol. I hope you have a great day. I hope to hear and talk to each and every one that does have a problem out there and even if you don't have an addiction problem. If you have any recommendations how I can communicate better to, to the people that, out, that are out there that really truly need help, call me, text me, email me. Have a great day. More importantly, have a sober day. God bless you.